The Olberts, brought to you by ChristopherCantwell.com. I think that's down too. <laughs> <laughs> that's not there yet anymore. No, <laughs> not really. <laughs> uh, Discord, Bitcot, Jeremy, Heisen, and Word, Jim Jesus, blah, blah, blah. You know the deal. How's yeah. it going, man? Oh, it's great. It's uh, early. It's hot. And uh, hey, we're finally doing a show, so whatever. Yeah, it's about time. <laughs> This is this is this has only been like what the fifth time we've planned this. Oh God! <laughs> In the past couple of months. Yeah, I had I had to threaten you and, and make you come by the flagpole for an ass whooping for you to get here. Hey, I was <laughs> listen, man. I was I was ready a bunch of those times. You forgot about me. There was there was like at least at least two of those instances. We're like, okay, we're gonna do it Tuesday morning, and then Tuesday night or Wednesday morning, I would just get a message from you that just said like, shit. <laughs> Yeah. Oops. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Blame it on me for not showing up. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Your office gave well, you responsibilities here, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's what I do best, man. <laughs> All right. So this is going to be. Um, we're not going to do this just yet, but I guess the contest is long over. Uh, I've been trying to get Miller Miller to do a show. He's not able to do it. So we're going to do the next best thing. We're going to read the comments, and you're going to you're not going to judge them, but you're going to laugh at them and tell me what you think. And then, okay. and then Steve will still do record either record uh, what he thinks the best one is, or maybe just sends me a note, and we'll do the next update. But we yeah, got all at, of them here. At, at this rate, it's probably best just to have him record something on his own because getting him to do a show seems to be a near impossibility. Yeah. And then I'll start working on another plan for another uh, contest, but it probably won't be for reviews. So let's go ahead and do that. And then I also want to talk a lot about Charlottesville a little bit because we haven't touched on it and everybody else has and I'm sure everybody's just dying for my opinion unless if you haven't been following my social media accounts <laughs> or YouTube <laughs> yeah, then you would know um, so yeah let's go ahead and get this started um, first of all we got one that's definitely not in the running uh, this is by SM2Philly I'm not going to read the rest of the usernames unless I think they're <laughs> not eligible but I think this one's not eligible uh, and it doesn't matter because his content uh, his, his uh, comment is la 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 so wow that that took a lot of effort yeah sm <laughs> took, took a lot of uh took a lot of brain effort on that one all right so here's one if you like radical agenda you'll love this five stars <laughs> if you're a christopher cantwell fan you'll probably love this podcast basically the same thing as radical agenda or if you love the police or brave lo brave men and women fighting for our freedom I don't understand the whole Bipcuck license deal, though. Is that like a driver's license? Bipcuck <laughs> license. <laughs> That's definitely a top-notch troll. Uh, yeah, I, I do like that. I, I really do hope someone see, sees that and goes like, oh, is this is like radical agenda, and they're like, ah, oh, screw these Oh, especially now, especially now, it's gonna be, <laughs> it'll be beautiful because people are going to be looking for something to fill that void since he's been taking off of everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> And this is from December of last year. I was like, I'll include Wow. Because like, the person contacted me was like, am I still in this? And I'm like, yes, you are. <laughs> Don't worry. I know. Is that, foresh in, is, that, uh, is that considered foreshadowing or something like that? Or yeah. <laughs> if he wrote it a year almost he a year ago? He made this and this inspired the whole entire contest because like, that's funny. We should do like a funny contest. So. Oh, okay. And I was like, good. Don't worry. I'll include yours uh, in the running. Uh, I'm not going to mention who it is, though. Just, just in case Steve Miller. Because I, I don't want Steve Miller having a bias on this. And knowing who's uh, saying what. It's so, okay. Uh, David, uh, damn it. <laughs> I won't read that one. I won't read that one. I'll skip to, to another one, and then I'll go back and at random. One of those will be that person's. Damn it. All right. So this <laughs> podcast is more riveting than Jeffrey Tucker's inevitable emoji movie review. Herein lies the true genius of the film. Gene's decision to finally embrace full freedom and expression from the dreary, satisfied, or classified world around him at, is a wonderful <laughs> cheering uh, char, excuse me wonderful and charming personification of the resilient market spirit in our own world that continues to amaze us every day whether that's the pioneers sharing the economy like uber and lyft uh upending the dusty old taxi license cart licensing cartels or the stunning new arena of cryptocurrency laying the foundation for a fewer for a freer human future all the time. We can witness the ongoing revolution everywhere we look. That movie is about something is cut off. The, mo the <laughs> that a movie about something as seemingly trivial as emojis can so 
poignantly uh, evoke this very same spirit and questioning the old-fashioned top-down control of society is nothing short than short than astonishing. Go see uh, go see this beautiful films, and then it's McDonald's, but there's a space between every letter. <laughs> Very nice. Very aesthetic. Very aesthetic. Yes. Uh, okay, so did you touch your butthole as a child, Jim? It's a very simple question, Jim. Yes or no? Did you touch your butthole as a child? Stefan, I agree with that. Molyneux, my first attempt at a funny comment. Uh, okay, so this is just him saying, like, I'm doing this for, for contest. Oh. <laughs> Which it was funny. <laughs> yes. Um, let's see. Any reference to Holy Moly is funny for me. Yeah. <laughs> An American classic tale. What can I say? Clearly more than the story of a lost weekend for a teenager, teenager getting kicked out of boarding school. The justification, justification is perfect. Our protagonist insists on acting like an adult smoking and drinking, but refuses the actual barriers of adulthood by demonstrating, demonstrated by hiding in his expulsion and refusing to sleep with a prostitute. Who hasn't wanted to walk away from an adolescent from the adolescent pressures of an unflinching <laughs> demands of, from adults? Best of all, our protagonist is an ad, is is adept at learning uh, at alerting us to the phonies that he sees all around him. The listener immediately agrees with the obviousness and, of the claims, and they can immediately likewise dismiss said phonies. It is a window into the tortured soul of the teen. Teachers look uh, teachers looking to rape you. Your friends dis, uh, disgusting you. Not discussing, disgusting <laughs> you, idiotic uh, siblings, etc. The pressure is uh, the pressure to defu is gargantuan. All in all, defu. I am left with <laughs> with more questions than answers. <laughs> we are being told the story is uh, the story by a close confidant, or is his young Holden actually giving his asylum admission? It seems as though not knowing is the only cold comfort. Uh, clearly, a masterpiece that will continue to live misunderstood. <laughs> I like his actual review I, style. <laughs> we, uh, we, until until he got until I heard the word "defu" in there, I was like, "Did he just actually plagiarize the review for Catcher in the Rye, or am I missing something?" <laughs> <laughs> that was good. I, I do. That was that was maybe I, it was. I and he just kind of the, the, the first the changing. first few lines. I'm like, I'm like, wait a minute. I've heard this story before. Where have I heard this story before? <laughs> Now we know. <laughs> well, it made me laugh, so that that's good. <laughs> the Lulberts. That's our word. The most fun the FCC can allow. Watch as, watch as this alcoholic hot sauce fanatic libertarian discusses the pitfalls of statism while taking a moral political stances uh, and taking moral political stances as he see uh, as he. I think it was a typo. And taking moral political stance as he takes a moral political stand against the f uh, against fascism, communism, and public infrastructure. This is not uh, for the faint of heart, uh, as this podcast has a, uh, has cursing and a lack of non arguments. Are you kidding me? This thing is <laughs> riddled with non arguments. It's full. Of <laughs> Another warning. <laughs> For those uh, interested, is Casp? He doesn't like the NAP. Overall, thought-provoking and hilarious podcast with equally thought-provoking and hilarious guests. But it's only, uh, but it only gets four out of five stars because he's a libertarian. I'm not surprised as his, at his lack of intolerance. <laughs> well, that was uh, accurate, if nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> And it's hard to read. You can't you can't blow up the letters, and I'm like far away from my monitor, so I'm just kind of oh, like squinting. Yeah. And I'm not really good at reading out loud anyway. I wonder if there's anything on Stitcher. Yeah. Can, where where are the reviews on Stitcher? I always wonder that. Yeah, uh, allegedly there there's some on here, and I do was you like, have to. Uh, yeah, but I think you have to. Do you have to go to? The, I think you have to go to the website to be able to put yeah. a review because because I use. I'm one of the few people who still uses Stitcher um, as my podcatcher. I just it was the first one I stumbled across years ago, and I just never changed it. But every time somebody says, "Oh, review my stuff," I'm like, "But but I but I can't." There's not a review button. There's a there's a thumbs up. I can click thumbs up on my phone. Yeah, I'm <laughs> while I'm listening to something. I think there actually. I think there may have been at a time because I saw that. Um, I think you, I saw that you could. And I don't hmm. see it now. I could see like a little button where I can, yeah. Oh no no no! Here it is. You got to go through the site though. It's I very guess, so. yeah. You have to go to the site at the very bottom, and there it is. But there's no ratings. So maybe that should be the next episode is getting everybody to rate it. <laughs> yeah, there <laughs> you Stitcher. go. It's only Stitcher this time, buddies. Um, 
Yeah, I had definitely have a favorite. I'm not going to pick. I'm not going to say who it is. <laughs> but, <laughs> but uh, my 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 vote is irrelevant. It's all about Steve Miller Miller because he's the literal comedian expert, I guess, of at least of us. Well, yeah, he's the only professional. So yeah, yeah. we just we just play comedians on the radio. Yeah. So yeah, let's talk about the thing that I've been really trying to avoid this whole entire time <laughs> I really, yeah. i'm so tired of this but we, i should probably say something about it because i have been talking a lot about it my views not i wouldn't say my views have changed on it but there's there's a lot of things that came out later where i was kind of like oh okay that's well that's kind of not true and this is kind of not true and this i don't know about um so i saw that like i had a friend i don't know if they want me to name was like you, you need to watch this this vice documentary on the charlottesville thing and I was like, okay. I've, and I then, finally watched that last night. And like one of the first things I see is Cantwell. And I'm like, oh, shit. Don't, don't, please don't be the, this libertarian guy is a white fascist Nazi. <laughs> like, and, yeah. I, and I'm glad they didn't even say the L word. So I'm, I'm very glad about that. Everything else was just like shocking. And I was like, well, this really kind of confirms what I've been hearing the whole time about Cantwell is that he's just a complete garbage human. From start yeah. to finish, yeah. Well, see, I don't, I don't know. Like I, like I said, I finally watched it last night. I had, I had been avoiding watching it too because I knew it, I knew it featured him, and you know, I've spent time with the guy. I really don't need to have any more in, of him in my face. Um, Mother, but God, I, I, no. I, I was sitting, I was sitting here last night, uh, watching, uh, reading a couple other things about it, and I was like, it, it actually, it came up in the in a feed that I was looking at. I was like, all right, it's twenty two minutes. I guess I'll watch this thing. <laughs> Um, so I sat and watched it and my first, my first instinct about like my first reaction to him was just like, this is the, this is Cantwell's act. This is not, can this is cause I could just, I could tell, you could tell, especially the scene at the, at, like when he comes back and dumps all his weapons on the bed. Oh my like, God. <clears throat> that, that was my was favorite him. part. Yeah, but that was him totally acting it up. Like you can even mm -hmm. tell his facial expressions yep. as he's like all like, or you know, and he, the Dude. very pronounced Long Island housewife accent, as I refer to it. Because <laughs> um, I was offended. Somebody actually called that a Yankee accent the other day. I'm like, listen, motherfucker, I'm a Yankee. That is not a Yankee <laughs> accent. That is a Long Island housewife accent. Trust me. Yeah. Hang out here with the fucking 50 year old housewives for long enough. You will hear it from all of them and that's he sounds like his mother that's what he sounds like he sounds like his fucking mother you, you, you've talked to his mother then oh i'm i'm way uh, loud go ahead uh, i've i've heard i've heard i've heard the voice but it's very it's it's uncanny <laughs> the older he gets the more he morphs into her apparently yeah, disgusting. <laughs> so yeah um when, when i saw that my, my initial reaction was like he like when he was throwing all the guns in the bed he had like this big old smirk on his face and the only time yep. i've ever seen a smirk on on their face like that is when like when i was in in the 90s when i was in elementary school and i see kids like check this out i got all the mcdonald's toys this month i got mario i got yoshi i got all of them he's pulling them out of his pockets like oh yep. shit that's what it looked like it was like yep you're showing me your pog collection dude like <laughs> calm down <laughs> Yeah, it was like a kid, kid at McDonald's. It, it was pathetic. Um, but then, like some of the shit that he was saying, and like the whole time I'm watching it, I'm like, I think he really is a cop. And I and I know that there's a lot of people who know in real life that's like, no, it's not plausible. But it just seems so right. Oh no! I, well, I because I'm one of those people who doesn't who doesn't uh, ascribe to that theory, but and and main and mainly due to my own bias of having met the guy uh, and and hung in and been in his presence multiple times. Not and I'm not saying it's not possible, but I, I I am sympathetic to the theory because yeah, he fits the profile in pretty much it's every way. He's Hal Turner 2.0. It seems like it, exactly, and depending on how this plays out. If he ends up walking in any way, then yeah, of course, everybody's going to be like, oh, he's definitely a cop. You know, the same thing that happened to Kokesh when he got out after only a couple of months. Everybody was like, oh, this just proves that he's an informant. My current theory is that he, st I still hold that he wasn't, uh, that uh, 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 cunt whale, as I now refer to him, um, wasn't, wasn't an informant, but he may become one after this event yeah. to save his own ass. 
because the last time he was in trouble, he wasn't in that much trouble. Like, I know Michael likes to spread this theory around that's completely false. He didn't get busted for cocaine. He got a DUI. And here in New York, back when he got his DUI, I think there was still the three-strike rule, where basically the first one was essentially a slap on the wrist. And if you if, if the judge really felt pissed off, you lost your license for six months. No shit. And, and I know this because multiple family members of mine had that happen to them. And I'm pretty sure that was his first offense. So him getting out of jail really quickly or whatever, and, you know, wasn't a big deal. But this time around, yeah, if he walks away from this, I'm going to start to think that he's definitely now. If he wasn't before, now he is one. Yeah. Yeah, but just just listening to him. And it was kind of weird because there was, like, one point where he was talking about, oh, this, this wasn't in the documentary. This was, like, in his little follow-up video where he was talking about how, like, oh, I was, I, you know, I talked to one of my friends, you know, in the police force. Something they're like... If if we're gonna if I mean, if he's trying to make the case and I know that he has if he's trying to make the case that like comp, by the way I'm getting some weird noise from you hmm like some weird background noise when you're not talking it's weird uh, go hmm. in, here here we'll do we'll do a little hosp- hospice right now <laughs> go into your voice settings uh, on oh, Discord yeah. and hit uh, noise suppression that usually works hmm. and, ch- and uncheck it or or turn it on. So, anyways, um, so while you're doing that, uh, <laughs> I, um, yeah, like a lot of people were, were going around saying that, like, oh, Cant- Cantwell's crying in this video. And I initially thought the same thing. And then, but, yeah, you sound way better now. Okay, and, okay. and then uh, Derek Bros, I guess, lived with the guy for a while. Um, at least that's what he's saying. He, he knew him and he, used to, and he used to do meth with Cantwell back in the day. And they used to sniff it. And he was saying that, like, it seems like he's sniffing meth and not crying. And I was like, that's an interesting perspective. And I've seen people sn- snort meth before. And I kind of know what that's like. But I just wasn't thinking about it, you know. I thought he was being a good boy about his not relapsing again. And then I watched yeah. it again. And I was like, oh, yeah, he's tweaking. He's tweaking balls. You know, talking on the side of your mouth, that's it's usually something... You know. Yeah, and yeah, and and so that the, that didn't occur to me either until I saw that. Con- that's that's the very conversation with Derek Bros on online. I was like, oh yeah, I, I didn't think of it either. I just assumed, you know, maybe because I wanted to believe that he was crying because it just made it funnier for me. I, so I will say that I'm glad that anytime I search for Christopher Cantwell on Google now, instead of getting like, you know, like oh here's my awesome website, instead I get like, ha ha, look at this bitch crying. <laughs> like so, I'm happy about that. Uh, it's, it's sad that it's not completely a true narrative, at least the, from what I'm seeing. It, it could be true. It could be totally true. It could be, you know, not crocodile, or. <laughs> well, I mean, ba- based on based on some of the other crocodile stuff I've tears, heard, there we go. Yeah, cro- <laughs> cro- cro- crocodile tears, crocodile tears. Um, yeah, I, uh, it, it which we call it. Based on some of the other stuff I heard from him, I mean, it's it's plausible that he was crying because he does seem like he's scared out of his eff- like. Well, at least he's playing that he's scared out of his out of his mind. Um, you know, when he with that whole you know, oh, if the I, when he gave his phone number out, that just that was hysterical. I'm like, yeah. really. Really, did you not expect to get a to get a shitload of death threats? I mean, I didn't hand my phone number out after what happened to me earlier this year, and I still got a bunch of death threats. So, like, just giving you the giving their number your number to them, you more. Th- yeah, I think he just said it was like his, his side uh, Google Voice account. I have one of those too, and I give that one out. I don't even care. Sometimes, like, I'll, I'll get like weird messages on it, but no threat. I have uh, the only time I've ever got a threatening. Uh, message from anyone uh, from anyone on the internet <laughs> because of my public stuff was like second life related and we ended up tracking down who it was it was like some developer for some kind of third party client for second life who was uh, who was mad because <laughs> they were getting delisted and banned from, from the grid whatever second life <laughs> is stupid anyway um, it was fun back then though uh, but where was I going with that <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know, crying meth. Oh yeah, there was um, some crying. Yeah, like yeah. So like he was giving that out instead of uh, his real number, and I think he even mentioned that in the video. No, I guess I didn't pay enough attention to yeah. that one. I, I only I watched that. I half watched that one. But I was just kind of more interested in the fact that he was willing to throw down his life for you know a piece of metal. Like that's what it really boils down to. Um, and then, you know, the whole alleged terror attack. I don't know what's going on with that just yet. Uh, I guess they just had his second uh, appearance in court. 
And now the FBI is saying that they're looking into people that he was hanging out with because now, they, now there's been reports that he was actually at a shell station with a few of the other guys like moments before it happened. So now they're like, I guess the FBI is looking into it again uh, as, as a terrorist, as a premeditated terrorist thing. I don't know. Right the really? Scene, yeah, I don't know because I've, I've heard conflicting things. I think you mentioned something that the FBI said like he might get off. And then I heard this morning that this... Well, yeah, I, 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 I don't know. Was, was it a Fiends episode I did the other night where yeah. we covered it? We covered an article. It wasn't talking about him specifically, but the FBI admitted, I mean, to things that most most people who are paying attention know anyway, that they have informants in these type of situations. Mm -hmm. But the FBI flat out said that pretty much anybody who was one of their informants um, is almost almost definitely not going to be charged with anything, even if they were one of the people who is ta gets targeted as as inciting the riots, or actually, um, if, even if there's evidence of them physical, uh, you know, starting physical altercations, them being the one being the aggressors, they still won't get charged because of basically red tape. Because they have to figure out whose informant belongs to who, and <laughs> it would be a waste of resources if we arrest somebody that we've dumped so much money into, basically. So, yeah, I mean, that's also fueled the, the Cantwell as a cop or informant yeah. uh, you know, idea, too. Um, but yeah, they, they basically said that. So anybody who was in their, in their protection to begin with is most likely going to continue to be protected by them. Yeah. Um, and... and um... I was actually talking to to someone at a, a Freedom Fest, and they were talking about the Oklahoma City bombing, and they're like, "He was like, I have a, like a conspiracy theory about it," and I was immediately thinking, like, "Oh God, not the whole, you know, what is what is his name? Will I used to be a big fan? Why don't I remember his name? Bill Cooper, <laughs> the Bill Cooper oh, conspiracy yes. about him." And he was like, no, 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 no. He's like, like, no, it, like, it was legit. Like, they were really trying to blow it up. But what was happening was like there was informants that were, you know. From from different agencies, like there was like police and FBI and whatever, and they were all they were all trying to get you know someone to do it, and the left hand wasn't looking what the right hand was doing, you know, and that's that's why it ended up happening instead of being thwarted. Like, but it was mostly just a bunch of informants like trying to get those two to start you know action on trying to blow something up. Oh, so so basically, what what the FBI does these days, yeah. which is you know, pretty much every every uh, bombing suspect they thwart has been somebody they've set up. Yeah, I think yeah. that was I think that was like, <laughs> I think it was I think it was a Judge Knapp thing he did years ago that he actually like he, he showed he showed the evidence that like the last seventeen in a row had all been FBI setups. And um, there was uh, there was a story that came out just shortly after Charlottesville where they were talking about um, a three percenter who had just got busted. Same thing uh, was you know had a had a had a provocateur you know try to get them to do it and was supplying them with all the stuff and then when he went to blow up the truck the bomb was inert i think that's what the, that's what he was saying like they were thinking that was going to happen but again the left hand wasn't knowing what the right was doing and it you know the, the bomb wasn't inert um yeah it just happened recently in oklahoma city again it was it was a three percenter oh <laughs> uh, so i yeah, must so, missed that one yeah i can't can't well's uh Kent was a horrible person, but whatever. And there was a part where he was speaking of like how I don't, I'm not, a, I'm not a big nap guy. Um, you know, like when they were walking on the street, and she was like, she was like, but you know, like we did everything we can legally to, to you know, grieve our stuff. And then she was like, but you know, you, you guys, you know, we're still fighting and everything. And she, he was like, no, we didn't initiate aggression. And I just started like cringing, like, oh please don't call it the NAP. Oh please don't call it the NAP. <laughs> Want this back on me, and it, and of course it wasn't. So, but I still cringe. I cringe every time someone says like, "Well, that's a nap violation." It's like I don't care. <laughs> like, yeah. I really don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think the nap is a term that uh, gets thrown around in his his new circles. So yeah. uh, the, the the fact that he went as far as to say that we were not the aggressors, I think that's as far as he could take it. Because even if he wanted to say anything <laughs> else, the, the rest of those people look at him like, "What the hell are you talking about, man?" Yeah, but. Yeah, he's he he is horrible. I mean, I don't know, man. Like I said, I've I I've known the guy a long of years now. I've I've met him. I've been in, I've hung out with him. I've spoken to him uh, extensively. Um, and for the longest time, I I just I thought this was like a lot of this was an act, um, just to get ratings, just to get you know, just to get followers, just to get subscribers, just to get money. Um, but he definitely drank his own effing Kool Aid. If you didn't believe all this stuff to begin with. Because the stuff he was spewing in that video was like, I mean, sure, some of it could have been put on, but 
you know, yeah. just screaming, just screaming about the Jews and like everything else. It's just Jews like Jesus Christ, man. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, there was also some like because I remember I was it the last yeah it was the last episode I did where we were talking about the Mises Institute and the blood and soil thing and like after after the Charlottesville happened and you know there was video clips of them running around saying blood is soil I had people going like see oh I got a feedback I don't know what's happening <laughs> but it, oh. they were like see Jim you were wrong like there, it actually is a Nazi slogan you're completely wrong and I was like but that's not what my point was like I, I know it's a Nazi slogan I know it's exclusively a Nazi slogan I was like but that doesn't really like combat what I was saying like I was talking about how Jeff Deist was pointing it out like yeah we we all think it's a bad thing but you got to keep it in mind when you're talking to these people you know keep that yeah. in the back of your mind when, when you're talking to them and and you know if, if you're not going to come at them with and talk to them in their own language they're not going to be receptive to, to changing their minds to yours and that was the whole point of the article or the speech rather yeah you know, so I was well, like that really doesn't like it's not helpful <laughs> and, and, you know, like, I know that I know it's did, yeah. Did, didn't that particular line start with people still care about yeah. blood and soil? Not I care about blood and soil. Yeah. I mean, I like you, like you. I have my issues with uh, with the Mises Institute too. But I I you know read that thing and I was like I don't get the I don't get the yeah. the hubbub. I don't understand why everybody's flipping out. <laughs> yeah. But primarily, it's usually used as like a dog whistle, and I and I completely uh, understand and agree with that. But I, what I think was dumb was that the fact that Jeff Dice and everybody at the Mises Institute knows that there's a lot of Koch brother money spent on discrediting them. Anytime they do anything or say anything at all, and they have to be careful about what they say because, you know, like all, all the, Koch, all the Koch, Koch brother libertarians are going to come out and say, oh, look, look, Nazis. Yeah, the, ca the, the, ca the Cato crew, sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it, was, it was definitely... Um, not not well thought out as far as as far as i'm concerned for that for that exact reason but yeah but though i mean and and as as, as ridiculous as i thought that was too the fact that people were saying oh look nazis 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 i it was kind of humorous i saw one of the first memes i saw come out of the after the the first night with the um you know with the tiki torch march um somebody had superimposed tom woods and jeff diced and somebody else's head on a bunch of those guys and it oh, did like it, it, it still made me laugh for a second yeah. I'm like all right that was funny because <laughs> it was almost like see there they are it, knowing you know knowing full well that the, the three of those three were nowhere near that event yeah um you know any sane person was like i i had people asking me like are you gonna go down there i'm like no why why would i want to be any part of that that's just yeah you know it was like a really bad Margaritaville cover. That's what it was. <laughs> the day. What was it? Uh, Pina Coladas Berg. <laughs> yes. <laughs> March against mosquitoes. Um. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the whole tiki torches were, was a bit ridiculous. I um I had I had made a video on my YouTube channel. Was like you know Charlottesville protesters, whatever. Uh, you know fixed audio, and I was like I improved the audio. But all it was was just like the first like thirty seconds of the Tiki Room song from, from Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, like mocking them is is the best thing you can do because the whole thing was just absolutely absurd from start. To, if it like if Antifa didn't show up and it was just them acting the fool, like it it, it would have been much more powerful. But because Antifa showed up and you know they now they can play the victim. It's, oh yeah, it's it's emboldening them, and I then so at the same time, like you know, people are like trying to defend Antifa, like oh no, but you know they're they're standing up to these awful people, like yeah, they're not doing it right, but I'm like no 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 no, they're maybe trying to stand up for them, but they're what they're doing is counterintuitive as fuck, <laughs> like you're just emboldening them. Oh yeah, um, oh uh, that and 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 the the actual because. I mean, I've been in so many of these discussions lately, and it just annoys the crap out of me because so many people are just like Antifa, Antifa. I'm like, okay, yeah, Antifa was a small percentage of the people that were there. Yeah. Those ones, they're not standing up for anything. They went there looking for a fight, just like yeah, yeah, yeah. Cantwell and his crew yeah. went there looking for a fight. I mean, yes, they went out and bought tiki torches while they were there, but all the rest of that crap you see in those videos, mm -hmm. they brought with them. Yeah. The shields, the clubs on both sides, the helmets. These people brought this stuff there. They were looking for a fight. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think I think you're absolutely right. They definitely did. It it, it doesn't bolt them because all it does is 
um, feeds the echo chambers on both sides with this with more of the same rhetoric. See, we told you yep. we went out there and did everything legally. We got our permits. Yep. We even we even had you know we even had the ACLU take our back and help us out and and get, get our permit reinstated. And these people just came and crashed the party. That's it's like exactly, no you assholes. That's exactly what Cantwell was saying in that video. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Almost verbatim. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. Yeah. When I when I heard that, I'm like, well, at least I, I wasn't off when I thought that's what they were thinking because here he is saying yep. that <laughs> but yeah they they you know that's all it is now now it's all oh, we did things the right way um no you didn't dude you went there looking for a fight you wanted them to come there you know that's why i have no problem saying both sides are wrong and why i also have no problem for once actually agreeing with trumpykins when he's out there talking when everybody's bashing him about how there was violence on both sides sure there was i watched the fucking yeah. videos there was violence on both sides both of those groups were looking for a fucking fight. And then there was a whole bunch of other people on both sides who weren't, but they all get lumped in with the rest of them. Yep. Well, so there, I don't know if that's entirely true. If there were non white national, like, like a white nationalist would be like the more moderate of the group. But I don't think that there was what we would call alt light people there um, because they were trying to get them there initially uh, and they were kind of targeting like given uh, Gavin McGinnis and Gavin McGinnis was started looking around and going like oh no 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 these are these are this is all just fucking fascist bullshit I haven't I want nothing to do with it and what's his, what, what does he call his group his fans the good boys or something oh. like that. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I forget. I, I actually heard him. I try to ignore him a lot, um, but I caught. I think it must have been a Rogan episode. I caught of him, and I heard him say, it, "But now I can't remember what it was." But yeah. I know what you're talking about. And he was um, like, "No, we're, no, we're we're not going. We're we're can't, backing out. Take our name off the flyer." Because he, he saw the writing on the wall. So a lot of those people who were there just to be like, oh, we're taking a stand for Robert E. Lee, were not there. It, the vast majority <laughs> of them, I think, were white nationalists, and it kind of showed itself the next day when people were you know walking around with nazi flags i mean if, if i'm if i'm gonna go to a protest and i start seeing nazi flags or if i start seeing commie flags i'm out i'm just out i'm, I'm not I'm yeah gonna, i don't i'm just gonna walk away and pretend i was not there if, if any reporter asked me like i don't know i wasn't involved i, <laughs> I was just, I was just i'm just going to the store man yeah p um, pictures those are photoshopped <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, see, the, the com I, I get what you're saying, although the commie flags, unfortunately, I'm kind of used to because, well, I live in New York and, you know, when you live that close to Occupy, you see those things all the time. Um, so people fly those regularly. But Which the Nazi wasn't flag, Occupy. <laughs> yeah, but, 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 but the Nazi flag, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely walking the other way. I want yeah. nothing to do with those. I want nothing to do with any part of that. Yeah. Um, I think most people, even most people will, will like let it slide if you're standing next to a commie flag. You stand in front of a Nazi flag, even like as a joke, like "Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make fun of Nazis." <laughs> People will still try to show that, like, look, he's a Nazi. Oh yeah, it's it's, it's, it's just no. <laughs> it's like and it, it's like and flag burning. Like I get the idea, but it's just poison. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah it's just it, poison. It, it, well, it, does, it doesn't even have to be. It doesn't even have to necessarily be the Nazi flag, though. I mean, that's the same reason I haven't hung my uh, Spookbusters flag outside yeah. yet because of that cross. I'm like, I want to do it to piss off my oh, neighbors, no, no, but no. I'm like, I'm going to get my house torched. No. I didn't. It didn't. It didn't happen last time. Now it's going to happen. <laughs> I have it hanging in my room, and like, if I know friends that come over that that know me well, I'm just going to leave it up. But if like. If a girl oh, gonna, if a girl's gonna come over or uh, someone I don't know, like oh, I'm bringing a friend, it's coming down, <laughs> it's coming down right now and getting folded up. Well, oh, yeah. mine hangs mine hangs predominantly in my kitchen because oh, that's shit. my recording studio. So it actually it's 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 actually it's hanging right behind me right now as yeah. we do this show. It actually is in full. It, if somebody stared in the bay window of my uh, kitchen, they could see it because it's like oh. you know in full view of the street. But I think they would but just I don't see think the people notice buses. what it is. Yeah, yeah. So, the, I, we should, we're kind of bearing the lead, I guess. Like, so I have flags. If you want one, I'll sell one to you. I'm only selling for twenty bucks, including shipping. Uh, just hit me up. You know where to find me. Um, but it's a uh, it it looks like the old Reich right what is it called Reich Reich Craig's flag I think that's how yes. you say it yeah um, and then it was like it started out in like I think it was actually a Weimar Republic flag originally wasn't it or maybe before that uh, I'm not actually sure I thought it was started with the Weimar but I'm not uh, I'm a little fuzzy yeah. on that so part of the, the history. original design didn't have a swastika on it it had the weimar republic or maybe the imperial with the kaiser whatever before it 
And then the Nazis kind of just took that logo out, put their logo on it, and now everybody associates it with that. So what I did was I was because everybody was using that kind of design for the Kekistan flag. I made one that was just like, oh, I'm going to call your flag a spook by making a Max Turner version of it. So Max Turner is kind of in the corner laughing. And uh, instead of a Nazi symbol, it's the Ghostbusters logo. <laughs> yes. And they, they printed it out for me. And I was like, cool. Like, you're not going to complain about copyright. Cool. Uh, <laughs> someone's going to contact Sony now. But I think Sony is at the point now where they're just like, what Ghostbusters? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're gonna they're gonna try to distance themselves as far as away from that yeah. kind of that franchise after that debacle. Uh, did, did you see the the Mr. Plinkett review? If you no, you have to watch it. It's brilliant, Mr. Plinkett's great. But anyways, yeah. Um, go go. I guess we're going back to Charlottesville. Oh, God damn it, uh, go back to Charlottesville. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, well, g- give it give it time. We won't have to go back anymore. Something else will happen. Yeah, yeah. Else. Something else. Well, there was the the free speech rally at Boston. But the great thing about that was is that they came out immediately and was like, all right, just to get things started, like this place is no, we're not we're not going to stand for white nationalists or white supremacists or the KKK or Nazis. If you're here for that, get the fuck out. <laughs> so good on them. Oh, yeah, I know. It was great. Everybody was talking about all oh, this. It's going to happen all over again. It's called, I actually caught a live stream and I watched some. I, I oh, The first live stream I see is some black college professor giving a speech in front of people holding anti GMO signs. <laughs> and I'm like, this is the free speech rally. Everybody's all hyped yeah. up about. Do you guys even pay attention? Like it was nothing but media hype. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, anytime the right wants a protest now, Antifa is going to show up. And it doesn't it doesn't matter what kind of right. Anything that's a right of Mao is going to be protested. Everything well, is going to be protested. See, and that—that that is, I mean, protest, whatever. I mean, I, I, I see protest and stuff like that as begging, so I don't really care about that either way. Um, but <laughs> the, you know, the whole... Did you the, say I'm an e-beggar? Sorry. <laughs> the whole, yes, I did. Um, the whole, um, I am. And, I, and, I I, and, I, and I'm proudly one myself, so it's yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, the uh, the fact that they that. will... that the people who actually belong to to antifa or consider themselves antifa will go out for just about anything now um on one hand it's kind of comical but on the other hand it is getting a little dangerous i mean i had i did see there was there was the one story that i read was it yesterday the day before some poor guy went out went and got a haircut he walked out he walked out of getting a haircut and then he got his ass whooped because somebody just they just assumed he was he got a nazi haircut like on, that kind of shit is happening. That's kind of scary, man. You know. Yeah. What, what, what about that Samantha B thing where she she outed some guy? You know, as a, like he has a Nazi haircut, and it turned out he had brain cancer. I know. <laughs> he had like a weird haircut because of because of the chemo. Oh, yeah. Fuck. So it's like, and and yeah, we can sit back and laugh partially at that stuff, but when if people are actually getting me. their yeah. You know, people are actually getting their ass whooped. It's like, all right, man, now, now what do we do? And, and this is why so many people uh, on the right, I think, even though on they don't some some of them I know personally don't want to be, but they become they become automatically sympathetic yeah. to to the white nationalists because they're like, look at these violent assholes. Look what they're doing. They're just literally dragging people out of their cars and out of, you know, out of hair, out of you know, barber shops and beating their ass just because the way they look. Um. Which doesn't well, help matters either. Yeah, I saw like a, a th- saw a thing today. Sorry to interrupt. Sorry to interrupt. But there was a thing today I saw where they had like this bald guy, and he was actually a part of like the of the counter protesters. Like he was part not not part of Antifa, but like part of the left side of the 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 thing. And some guy came up to him and like punched him, and he had like a huge gash on the side of his face, just because he was bald yep. and he had a tattoo on his chin. And they were like, guys, you just can't be punching people who have weird haircuts <laughs> like I, he's, on, he's on our side <laughs> like what are you doing he, which is exactly why the, i have a real big problem with the whole it's okay to punch a nazi just because yeah. they're a nazi because you don't fuck you idiots don't know who the fuck the nazis are <laughs> yeah oh, fine then adjudicate it first adjudicate that this person is a nazi and then we'll talk about whether or not it's okay for you to punch him exactly you know yeah. a little bit a little bit of a buffer there man come on yeah <laughs> And I used to say that Richard Spencer was not a Nazi, but now he's starting to take up socialist causes, and I'm like, yeah, nah, that's a Nazi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, see, that's that's funny. The first time I heard, the first time I heard him talk economics a few months ago, that was the same thing. I was like, oh wait a minute, 
Maybe, maybe he is actually a Nazi. Yeah. I, I was I was one of the ones saying the longest for the longest time going, people, you keep throwing that goddamn word around. Most of the Nazis are long dead. Yeah. You keep using that word. I don't think you know what it means. But once he started doing that, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. All right, never mind. I'm sorry. I take it back. Go ahead. Yeah, Proceed yeah, yeah, with yeah, your yeah. Nazi, not, Nazi rhetoric. But, but before then, like, he actually had some very, like, libertarian. He was a libertarian. Like, I'm, there was, like, a video of him, like, introducing Ron Paul, like, way back in the day before he started taking up this identitarian crap. And he, um, yeah, so like, and he had like these libertarian views, but over time, as he kept hanging out with these other identitarians and Nazis, blah, 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 like he started picking up those, those kind of views. So now Which, I would say he's a Nazi. <laughs> like, and I'm agreeing with you. He's a Nazi. Yeah. No, but don't punch him because that makes him look like the victim. And then he can, he can go, oh, look at these violent people. Yeah. That's but, what happens. All right. Well, actually, and ju- ju- the way you just described, uh, Spencer's uh, apparent transition that actually that that reminds me that that kind of <laughs> transition I like using that word with them it just makes me laugh um, but the, <laughs> but uh, that kind of that kind of just that kind of explains to me that's how I think well, that's what I think happened to uh, uh, cunt whale as, as yeah. well um, where he just you know he had these ideas because like I said I hung out with the guy so I you're, watched you're, him you're interact basic, with black people so what you're basically saying is I uh, can't is an ideological tranny yeah. Okay. Yes, that's, that's exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> he's he's, he's I, I'm using that term. I'm using that term to be insulting to Cantwell, not to to trans trans. I, I okay. absolutely okay. absolutely just say that. Like I'm not I'm not trying to be mean, but if he's going to call <laughs> other people trannies, I can call him one. Yes, you can. <laughs> so absolutely. Yeah. He's he's yeah, but he's uh what call it? He's an opportunist. Mm-hmm. That's what that's what that's what that's what he's been. You know, I say the same thing about Trump. He's not any particular thing. He's an opportunist. He just yeah. he just goes where he goes where it's where it's convenient, where he can get the most power, mm. where he can get the most views, whatever it is, depending on the person. You know, and that, I think the same thing happened to him because, like I said, I, I knew the guy, and he wasn't that much of a he was like he made off you know he made the quote unquote yeah, off yeah. color jokes every once in a while, but he was too. Yeah, this is, we all you know we all yeah. do. I do it too. Um, you know, I do it. I I do it with my black friends too. But you yeah. know, and I watched him do it too. I watched him interact with like and, and never have a problem. And then just slowly, he built this persona of himself, and he he admitted this readily back when I was a fan of his. Um, he would admit it readily that really? you know what he was you, doing. You used to like Cantwell. Yeah, well, like I said, I I, I hung out with the guy. Okay. I talked oh, yeah, to him. Okay, yeah, yeah. So I guess I sat down and talked to him. So when I found out that he was doing podcasts and stuff, I'm like, oh, I'll give it a listen. I've I've met the guy. I've hung out with him. I've, I sat down and had like an hour long conversation in my friend's living room with him one day. <laughs> you know, like, um, and he, we would talk about economics and stuff. And he was he was a lot smarter than me when it came to that stuff. So I was absorbing it all. You know, this was way back when I first found the found libertarianism, mm-hmm. and. Uh, you know, you know, so he used to readily admit this. That it's an act. You know what he a lot of stuff he says, he does it. He does it for a shock value. He's yeah. trying to he's trying to drive content, he's trying to try tra- tra- traffic to his site. Um, but I think he just started buying his own bullshit. And the same thing, like with Spencer, you know, once you alienate yourself with a certain group by by saying certain things, it's like, OK, well, now I found people who are more accepting of these views that I have. And you sit, you hang around them. And, yeah, you just absorb this shit. Yeah. And if you're weak, if especially if you're weak minded and or an opportunist in either case, you'll easily be swayed by this stuff uh because it's just like you, you find you know you find that camaraderie you feel like you're accepted now and okay great yeah sure that we're, we're we're supposed to hate these people okay that sounds good why not you know yeah. <laughs> it runs it runs counter to this libertarianism thing i've been talking about for years ah whatever you know we can make exceptions right it's fine yeah. like I, i've uh, known i've known people who have like put maybe not personally but i've seen people who have done like uh like satire like channels oh what was that oh uh hi, that was on your end i don't know yeah hi alexa I thought I turned the voice command thing off. I'm not sure. Shut up. Anyways. I actually played with an Alexa for the first time the other day. It was rather fun. Yeah, they're kind of fun, but I, I, I usually keep the microphone off and I keep it kind of de- uh, uncharged. But the last couple of days I needed it for alarms and stuff. So it's helpful. But I turn it off when I'm not using it and let the battery drain. <laughs> so they can't listen to me anymore. Um, I forgot where I was going with that. Shit. Yeah. Oh, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Sorry, I interrupted you. <laughs> no, actually, Alexa interrupted me. Moral of the story is: don't buy an Alexa. Don't buy anything IoT. But yeah. Oh yeah. No. No. So, anyways, I remember now. Uh, so I, I I've seen people before who have like created like personas online. Uh, like Boston Antifa is a good example of like this this kind of troll thing where it's they're doing this as complete satire and it's all humorous and okay, playing that- the other side. 
That that is satire, right? I yeah. thought that was, and I've oh, seen so know? many more. No, no, I, I no, I was pretty sure that Boston. No, no, I, I was pretty sure. I I thought I remembered Boston Antifa being a parody site or a satire mm-hmm. site, but in the ever like in the past couple of days, I've seen more and more people who normally understand this stuff, like smart people, like people I usually you know I have a lot of respect for, fall, like now all of a sudden falling for this one, mm-hmm. and I'm like, wait a minute, did I did I miss the did they switch or something? Like, what's going on here? So, okay, I was, ju- I, I was, I was just making sure I was still, <laughs> I, I was right about that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're, they're joking, but so like, if you if you're doing something like that, of course you're not going to be drinking your own bullshit, uh, drinking your own Kool Aid rather. But if you're if you're like, okay, I'm I'm a libertarian, but I'm going to kind of make fashy jokes. Like after a while, you're going to start end up believing your crap because it's not really a like complete satire at that point. You're making jokes and you're kind of making yourself more receptive to it. And you kind of see the same thing with um, I think I think you, that guy T is kind of backpedaled a lot from that stuff. But for a while, he was joking around about libertarian fascism. And oh yeah. He, and then he made a video where he was like. I was saying this stuff is a joke, but, you know, like it's when I'm seeing the when I see the left, it seems like tempting. Well, it's the, that's the same, the same thing with uh, Chairman Chairman Howe, uh, <laughs> my my uh, my, my 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 former my, for, my, my former friend, Jared. Um, he, uh, you know, Great same thing. Standing oh. guy, frankly, I, right. I make, uh, you know, I was, I was, I was, I was making jokes about this stuff, but you guys are pushing me to this. You know, the more and more I w- look at it, it's like it's not. It's, it's, it's sounding better and better. Exactly. Um, it's your yeah, fault. I, mean, I, I have faults in my logic. Yes. <laughs> that guy T was I, the. Okay. That guy T was the funniest though. It's like you realize you you realize that if you keep following the, these guys, they're gonna want to kill you at some point, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. You're just you're just that you're a house pet to them, you moron. Yeah. <laughs> a useful. Idiot. Well, I, don't, I wouldn't say he's an idiot. He's a really smart guy. Uh, but he's being a useful idiot. <laughs> oh no! Oh yeah! I, I, I don't. I don't think he's like. I think he's like been backtracking a little bit because I had talked to a friend of his. I'm not going to say who, but I talked to a friend of his, and he was saying like, "Yeah, it seems like he's kind of getting interested in it, but like I wouldn't be too worried. I think it's just a little bit of a phase that he's going through." Because like when I talk to him, like he doesn't really have a lot of these sympathies, and he kind of goes like, "Yeah, I'm kind of trolling most of the time." Um, but I guess you know, I don't know. Like we'll see. I do like that well, IT. I guess he wants me on one of his like I guess he has got a new podcast with a terrible name <laughs> just talking. Oh. <laughs> but uh but he he acknowledges that it's a terrible name. But not the same the Lulberts is any better. Uh <laughs> But yeah. So I don't I'm I'm just I'm going to uh, I'll do it. Uh you know, I'm not going to be one of those people that's like, "Oh, but you know, he he gave someone a platform I completely, completely disagree with like Chase Rachel's. Therefore, I'm not going to have anything I'm not going to do that kind of drama shit." Oh, Jesus, who the hell cares? Yeah. You, you, you know, it's uh, I I I mean, I I don't follow him that much. I know who he is. I remember watching a couple of his videos when he first broke out when he was like what, like 19 or 20 when he first started doing his stuff. I mean, he's not that much older now, right? But um, I didn't even know who he was until I looked at my subscriber list one day and saw that he was like sub to me and I was like, "Who is this guy?" <laughs> and I was like, "Oh." Oh, I just oh. I I had heard, I, I had heard about him. I had saw a couple of his videos. Then he was on I guess Tom Woods or maybe I heard him interviewed somewhere else before that too. And I was like, oh wow i'm like yeah holy crap like like, talk about you know you're saying he's not stupid yeah and talk about intelligent i'm like i'm like talk about intelligent i'm like holy guy i'm like not only he's intelligent articulate like um worlds ahead of where i was at his fucking age i was just like like jaw dropping the first time a couple times i heard him speak i was because i was thinking back to myself at that age and i was just like damn (laughs) um but i haven't fought like the only reason i know about his his um maybe flirtation with these ideas is because um i belong like i don't I don't go on Twitter that much. I try to avoid it. Um, I'm, I've always been more of a Facebook guy, but they, um, I, I belong to some messaging group um, that uh, like Anarchy Ball and a lot of those other people are in. Um, and they just con- I, like every time I check the message list, they're just constantly like tweet, like they're, they're sharing tweets, like battles they're having with him and like the comments they're making back and forth. Like that's the only reason I know. Um, I have, but yeah, like I said, I have really mixed feelings about Anarchy Ball. <laughs> Really, really makes see. About unfortunately, I know like the one guy. The guy. I, I'm pretty sure it's the one who originally started it. It was him and his wife. I know them. <laughs> like I know the two of them. I've known them for a long time. Are you talking now. about the philosopher and Jamie. Are they married? 
No, 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 not those two. Um, oh. It's uh, the the one the ones who actually um, they have a name that people make a lot of they make fun of a lot of time because it's fairly easy to make fun of their last name. Um, but they're the ones who actually did the majority of the posting and the back in the way way back at the beginning, and the ones who actually designed the uh, like the uh, stuffed balls that they sell and stuff oh, like that, okay. all the merchandise and stuff like that. Um, and he's the one that usually is the is the one on Twitter in those battles. It's usually him. Oh. Um, he uh, I've known him for a long time, and like we align a lot in most of our you know most of our thoughts. Although he's more like I've drifted more away from the more objectivist type stuff that he's into um but like he yeah, was misunderstood now, now for a long time he was he was maligned <laughs> what's that now you're unspooked yes he was uh, <laughs> exactly he was uh he, he he was maligned for a long time so i have a lot of sympathy for that and they also caught a lot of crap when something happened to one of their kids and it was just like i got very i took it i took it very personally because i was like you know very protective of them i'm like that's really shitty um but yeah they're they're, they're they seem so schizophrenic because it's not one guy yeah <laughs> There's multiple people responding under the name Anarchy Ball, and you never actually know who you're talking to right away unless you know them and you start figuring out their, you know, their 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 writings patterns. Um, it's yeah, like it is, it's easy to have. It's kind of like the Freedom Fiends Facebook. How like oh, yeah. you see it argue with itself. <laughs> yep. Like, oh, someone's talking. Yeah, it's crazy. But no, no, it's like three other admins yelling at each other. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so th there's those people like. And I, I know some of them, they're fine, but sometimes they start picking, like, fights with, with people, and it's like, why? Yeah. Like, just ignore these idiots. Like, why are we spending so much time on Chairman Howe? <laughs> like, oh, really? well, that obsession. I mean, yeah. Well, a lot of people, a lot of people give give the chairman exactly what he wants, and I've tried. Like, I gave up trying to explain to yeah. them like the, that's all you're doing, but because they don't want to listen, because um, they they swear that they you know he doesn't get to them. I'm like, dude, you post about him every day. Of course, yeah. he's getting to you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I just I just need to tell every I, everybody needs to know how horrible he is. Oh, believe me, the people who yeah. want to know how horrible he is have already figured it out. <laughs> it doesn't take too long. It takes like three seconds to look at his Facebook page and see like. 1488 uh, uh the Jews will not replace us. Yeah, this guy's probably not the good guy. <laughs> it doesn't take that long to figure out. Sure yeah. That was horrible. Exactly. Yeah. And a lot of a lot of those guys, like I said, I was a friend I was it's 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 sad for me because I was friends with a lot of these people. You know, like a lot of us, uh, you know, some of the lesser named ones, like not the the ones that don't have more of a public face, but like that are pretty big in in that um, transition movement, I guess. Tranny from, movement. Uh, yeah, the tra the tranny movement. The Nazi from, trannies. Uh, the na the Nazi trannies. Yes. Um, you know, I was friends with these people. We I'm going to get letters about this. But go ahead. <laughs> we, came, we came. We 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 came to what? Who from MK? Um, we, we, <laughs> and the whole crew. Well, Brian. Brian <laughs> or, MK. Brian and Stephanie. Well, Steph I don't know if Stephanie lives, but Brian. 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 Brian sorry, Brian. Stephanie. We're, we're not trying. Like, we're not trying. We're not trying to be offensive for me because I, I want I need to I need to be nice in public. You can yell at him for me. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're not trying to be offensive. He'd be like, um, See, this is what happens when you bash the matrix. You start calling people trannies. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> matrix bashing, not even once. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so so so. <laughs> So it's it's sad for me because like I came up like I came to anarchism with a lot of these people like we st like we all kind of stumbled upon it at the same time we were all like noobs like f four or five six years ago together so to watch a lot of these guys uh, just make this shift and I'm like including including ones who have been not only who I've hung out with in person but I've allowed to stay at my house. You know, like one of one of them. Yeah, I know. Uh, one of the yeah, that was that was the only one that ever banned me about that whole tr tranny. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not but trannies, the yeah. But but like you know, and and normally I I've for the longest time I've tried to not create echo chambers for myself. I try to allow myself access to right. as many people as possible. So I get so even if I don't like these people, you know, but like I've actually had to go to unfriending a lot of these these fucks because I just I can't I just don't yeah. want to be connected to them. That's how severe it's gotten, and uh, it was a hard thing for me to do because for the longest time I, I refused to hit the button because I was like I I'm always preaching no echo chambers. You got to have differing yeah. opinions. Yada yada yada. But get these opinions nope 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 i've had it quite enough of them i'm fucking done yeah i had a lot of like legit alt writers like white nationalist people that i've followed on facebook 
and I'm not well, not any of their groups, but I have groups with maybe a little bit of leanings towards maybe like alt light, but not alt right. Definitely not white nationalist. I wouldn't be in any of those groups. But even then, when that whole thing happened, I was like, yep, I'm out of that group. I'm out of this group. Uh, unfriend this person. Unfriend this person. I'm just done. And any anytime I ever saw it, and I was like, if I see anybody defending Antifa, they're going to. Like, everybody's gone. I'm just, I don't want any part with any sympathizers of any, either side. Like, I'm just done. I just don't want anything to do with these people anymore. I just want to make fun of them. That's it. Like I, and it, it was, it was because of, it was because of the same thing. Like the only reason why I had them on there is because I didn't want to be like, oh, these people are just racist. Ignore it because that's not really, it's not making a case for it. So if someone doesn't have the the mental ammunition to like, you know, think about why they may be wrong, they may be swayed to it. So I wanted to at least understand what their point was, so I can make you know, a, a rational decision on what they're saying and then make a good point against it. And I already got what I wanted out of it anyway. I understand their philosophy. I understand why it's wrong. I'm done. <laughs> I just don't yep. want any connections with it. I'm just done. Like I, I get it now. It's all trash. Absolute trash. Yeah. I, I've actually, I've actually kept around like one or two flat earthers over these people <laughs> like that, that, that's like, that's seriously, too, that's too much. <laughs> What? White well, no, nationalists, uh, flat earthers. Uh -uh. Nope. No, see that. See, I've sw I've the pendulum has swung for me, man. Because there's one, <laughs> well, the, 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 the one that I keep, the one or two that I keep around are very respectful. They don't, they're not constantly pushing things like calling people globe tards and all this other stuff. Um, and <laughs> you really do that? <laughs> oh, oh, you've never had that happen to you? Oh my God, yes. <laughs> when I actually. When I actually tried to um, give these folks the benefit of the doubt at the beginning and be willing to actually investigate, you know, investigate their claims um, just because I did not want to, you know, oh, like because I try to preach about not just openly dismissing things um, and at least look at least giving things some even a cursory glance, you know, before saying, oh, this is crap. Like, obviously, in my mind, as soon as I heard about it, I'm like, are you fucking insane? Flat Earth? What? Um, but, I, you know, OK, fine. You guys got evidence. Bring it to me. Let me see it. And I actually took some time to read it, you know, but like when I would come back with questions like those, that's the ins the first insult I was thrown at. And then I found it wasn't just this one guy. It happened a lot. Like Globed Hard was a was a it's regular insult. Cuck. Yeah, exactly. It's their cuck. Like, or their no, ballers. Ball, I think baller is their, is their cuck. That's what you're <laughs> you a baller. baller man. Cool. All right. I'll take yeah, that. Well, that's what I said. I was like, all right, man. That's, cool. Yeah. You know, that's traditionally not an insult. Just yeah. Oh, we're taking it back. Yeah, you know, that type of thing. <laughs> <laughs> we're taking it back for the wrong. <laughs> we're taking it back to you, make it a slur again. Yes. Make baller a slur again. <laughs> so, but yeah, but my point of my <laughs> my point of that <laughs> my point of that was that the one or two that I keep around are not like that at all. And we actually, when it comes to like our rest of our views, we align pretty darn closely on everything else, and we can have rational conversations about everything else, and we don't talk about that stuff. So I'm like, I'd rather keep that them around than these people i'm like at this point if i even see the kekistan flag i'm like i'm like ready to hit the button i'm like wait a minute yeah there's a lot of good people with with uh Kekistan i know flags, but so but but I'm, I, that, like it. when i start seeing if i see a lot of it then i'm like okay mm. well but no i yeah i get i get i get leery i guess i should say i don't yeah. hit the button right away because you're right there are people i know people that use it and you know they're, fr they're friends of mine and they they don't think they don't have any of these other views the kekistan yeah. thing is just funny but too many of them Attach the two, you know. I think the two are a synonymous. They turn it into a spook. <laughs> oh, are you there? Oh yeah, oh, I'm okay. here. Oh okay. Yeah. Taking so. a vape hit. <laughs> yes. Bonk. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. No. So it's yeah. all, it's all crap. It's all man. a mess. Yeah, and they're all a mess. Commies are terrible. The ashes are terrible, and I, I, I know that Seamus has said like basically, you know, just let them fight it, just let them fight. And the problem with that is like that's pretty much the attitude with like the Weimar Republic, and then the fights kept getting bigger and bigger, and then people were started going like, okay, now I have to pick a side, <laughs> and the side they picked was the Nazis. Yeah, no, well, I and I, I get that because I, I said something similar last week, and James, James Weeks called me on it. 
yeah. because I was like, I was like, I, I, but even though I did preface it by saying part of me wants them to just let it fight, let them fight it out. Uh, but he called me on it right away. And then when I thought about it, I'm like, ah, fuck, he's right. <laughs> <laughs> like, although he had, he had slightly different reasoning because he was just like, it's, you know, the Nazis are the problem. And I'm like, well, you know, the other people, some of the people on the other side aren't exactly They're both a uh, problem. They're they both, are both a problem. Both you know, kids, 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 you're, kids, 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 you're both. You're both just fucking awful. <laughs> um. <laughs> You're both human pieces of garbage, and I can prove it mathematically. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think yeah, I think so. what they ended up wanting is is pretty much identical. In the end, like that's what they want. In the end, it's just what side they're on. Because I know there's a lot of them, and I wouldn't say that. Because I, I, I've seen someone like try to just make the spurious connection, like. Antifa or SJWs, and I'm like, no, there's, I'm sure there's crossover, no doubt, but I don't think they're the same thing. <laughs> no, <laughs> they're not the exact there's, same thing. There's, but, there's over, there's overlap in most of the right. groups on the left, as there is overlap on most of the groups on the right. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, just you know, all, all, all SJ, all SJWs are not Antifa, but you know, yeah, all, and all, 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 you know, most Antifa usually do have SJW tendencies too, you know. Yeah. So it's, I, I don't really like. I think they want a, a negative ethno state. <laughs> We're just no. like everybody can come in, but white people, you're, 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 you're down yeah. in the wrong. You, you know. Drink from this water fountain instead. Um, <laughs> so I, I don't know why they, these people just can't get along and realize, like, hey, you want a society free of white people, and we want a society with only white people. Why don't we start working together and achieving this goal? And then you guys go over there and leave me alone <laughs> and let me live in yeah. Vegas, you know, and I'll do my thing, you know. And if, if black well. people want to hang out with me, awesome. If 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 they don't want to hang out with me, awesome. I don't care. <laughs> I don't. I don't go like, oh, I need a. I need a token black friend to make myself, you know, like seem progressive. No, no, no. If you want to hang out with me, it's cool. I don't care what your skin color is. Yeah. Well, I don't. Well, number one, of course, both groups don't recognize how similar they very they are, or or yeah, at least yeah. what they you know what what the end game is. Um, but the other part is at least some of those, especially. Well, I guess more on the the nationalist, the white nationalist side. Uh, you know, as much as they claim that they just they want to leave, they 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 want to be left alone in their own little white ethno state. I think most of them deep down don't really want to leave other people alone, though. No. They stay. They still want to push them further and further away, and you know, take it to even more extremes in some cases. And uh, I don't know. I mean, because the other the other I mean, the bigger problem for me, of course, is that they the fact that they the fact that they both use similar tactics that they both actually want the same end game <laughs> um but either don't realize it or unwilling to recognize that and then keep going at it is it makes it their their continued action just make it worse for the rest of us yeah because all this is doing is increasing the fucking police state which is terribly ironic for the you know for the for the quote unquote anarchists who have shifted towards the alt right who supposedly want you know to to end the state and stuff like that it's like no, no, you're just helping increase it, you dumb fuck. <laughs> like, what is it? Like, the, what did I say the other day? Something about the fact that the that they they they're more Marxist than they realize because they really now believe that they can use the state to smash the state. Um, you know, like, that, well, th yeah. So I heard you say that, and I was like, that's not entirely what they want. So, like, communists don't think that you can smash the state with the state. What they think is that, like, by growing the state and then, like, transferring over everything to the uh, to the proletariat, that eventually the state will dry up and wither away. And that's not really smashing the state. But what, what they what what I think they what these people want is, is they're basically believing that kind of bullshit. Like they're, they're drinking Marxist Kool-Aid. Right. <laughs> and they all right. Have, well, so and they and so, they, so, they're kind of doing the same thing. We're just like, well, we got we got to we got to go through the pinhole of fascism before we can get to you know to our ideal thing. It was like, but that's the dick hole. It's yeah, the dick hole of fascism. It's it's um. <laughs> it's the exact same thing that 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 Marxists are trying to do. Like they're trying right. to use they're trying to use a big powerful state which they don't like in order to get to their ideal society, which will never happen. All right, so sma smash is the wrong word then, but he, but I was yeah. right on my on my on the rest of on the rest of my um, 
Right. What, uh, yeah. Okay. That's yeah. There you go. Okay. So okay. I, I, mean, I retract we, my statement about Spanish. They're they're using it. They're, okay. they're, they they want to use the state to shrink the state. Yeah. Essentially. I do think that liberal libertarianism, maybe maybe not anarcho capitalism or anything like that, is achievable because historically, like these states have had, like there has been small governments before. Sure, they grow, but you know, they're they're at least people enough people want them for them to start existing every once in a while throughout history that has not been the same throughout communism <laughs> like every instance of communism it's just been a, a disastrous large state um and it's been terrible I mean, even the anarcho-communist cliques like if, if you look up what happened in ukraine and catalonia it it was a state, and they had like concentration camps and, and oh the god, the Catalonia. Oh god, I hate when yeah. people try out the fucking Catalonia argument as like, see, it worked. It's like, dude, you did you actually read what happened? <laughs> yeah, you no, know, it didn't work. Yeah, it worked. Yeah, a bunch of fucking people died. Yeah, what the fuck, dude? <laughs> They're going around like assassinating clergy, and it's like it's not even like looking. It's, you don't even have to go to like the right wing versions of it to see what really happened. You can read the books that Noam Chomsky recommends about Catalonia. Read them. Yes. And it, they yeah. say, like, yeah, we had concentration camps. We called them concentration camps. But they're not the same thing as a Nazi concentration camps because ours were first. And then they kind of co-opted the term. It's like, I don't care what the term is. Like, you're still, like, imprisoning people <laughs> for no reason just because they don't agree with you. Are you fucking Yeah, serious? exactly. <laughs> it's not. But, 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 but we're, we're, at, we're anarchists. We're the anti-fascist. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> You do the exact same thing. You're just not. You're not. You're not controlling industry through regulation and taxation. You're just nationalizing Yet. it. <laughs> yeah. Give them difference. more time. Yeah. Give them more time. They might. They might have. They might have. They. They probably would have ended up there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just like, just like, just like, just like Rothbard's, where people get stuck in the fact that he were, he was willing to work with the right. It's like, no, he died before he realized that was a failure too. Um, yeah, the Catalonia died before they had a chance to go full fascist. Yeah. <laughs> that that whole experiment. That was a me and then on top of that, they were warring with each other, like the anarcho social, the, the anarcho communists, the and we're fighting the yeah. syndicalists. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> no. No. I think a lot of those kind of anarcho lefty groups, not all of them, but a lot of them try to be like little snowflakes because they're always like, oh, I'm 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 kind of a Trotskyist anarcho syndicalist. <laughs> you know, it's like the the ideology generator. It almost seems like they're going there and picking one that sounds lefty and oh, that's me. Because <laughs> like, no one else has that one, you know. <laughs> yeah. I'm a post-colonialist uh, <laughs> trans, <laughs> trans Marxist humanist. Trans, I'm a trans Marxist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's, I'm a it's funny. Bourgeois, bourgeois capitalist trans Marxist yeah, no identitarian. One, no one can just be Marxist anymore. They have to be like a hundred different flavors of Marxism. And if you find, if you ever meet the same one of the same, you have to change your ideology because there's only room for one. You know. <laughs> Well, uh, I think that I think that's in part because so many because Marx Marxism has been bashed by so many people for so very long that people don't. Well, it's not that kind of Marxist, you know. Although, can you know, uh, on the same note, most of most of those same people, I don't think have actually read much Marx. Um, <laughs> but you know, that's yeah. a whole other story. Yeah. Well, there was, there's one thing that definitely Marx was wrong about, and that was his predictions, because his whole thing was like. He, uh, that that people like that humans have like this trend and they're and it's all leading to communism. So it started out with feudalism and then feudalism gave the infrastructure and, and the ideas to create capitalism and then capitalism is going to basically f you know fall aside and late stage capitalism and then we're going to have communism. But what happens every single time? <laughs> like it just doesn't happen. And and it's, so what do they blame it on? Oh, it's fascism. Cute. <laughs> well, you see, Real Jim, cute. you're just not you're just not looking at it on a long enough timeline. That's yeah. the problem. You know, you need to give it more time. Yeah, you but need, Marx, you need to, you, Marx didn't you, predict fascism, so apparently <laughs> Hegel was completely wrong. <laughs> so was Marx. Who'd have thunk Hegel was wrong? Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't. Like, know. I think every one of his students thought he was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> like, like every time I heard like someone like, oh, they were part of the Young Hegelians. It's like, okay, they've they've written books about why Hegel was wrong. <laughs> Sterner, uh, yeah, Sterner, uh, uh, Marx ended up completely disavowing them. So I don't know. Uh, 
fuck Hegel. Well, and I didn't say bagel. <laughs> I did not say bagel. I said Hegel inside. Bagel. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> bagels are good. Hegels are bad. Um, is there anything else you wanted to talk about? <laughs> There's uh, lots of stuff to talk about. So no, many Nazis, I... so little time. <laughs> <laughs> you want to bash a fash? <laughs> no. I, I, I don't I don't have I a don't. cute one for her commies, but do you want to bash a commie, I guess? Uh, that's, that's the new that. contest. Just figure figure out a cute rhyme for, for smash the fash for commies. <laughs> smash. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to I'll try to come up with one later. Uh, <laughs> nah, I'm the like they're they're doing a great enough job bashing themselves um, or each other, you know. Yeah, um, like, you know, I, 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 I'm with you. I'm I'm trying to distance myself as much as possible from all um, of it. Uh, yeah. uh, other other than continuing to have conversations like this on podcasts and radio shows, but other than that, I don't want to have anything yeah. to do with it. Um, I'm still trying to get the I'm just still trying to get the hell out of here and uh, start my life over again. Yeah. So, you know. I don't, bash uh, the anarchist out there. You, that's what you're dealing with. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Let's destroy this man's life because he said something bad about a fireman. Yeah, well, you know, luckily, <laughs> luckily, luckily, that's passed over. That's lo- oh, yeah. luckily passed Can over. Can we talk about the elephant in the room? <laughs> is that is that? <laughs> well, it's still not over. Okay, um, so that's a no. Yeah, yeah, I'm still supposed to be, you know, I haven't really. I mean, I discussed it a little bit, but whatever. Yeah. It's not it's not actually it's not actually over. I'm not even supposed to show up to my next court date. It's a whole big mess. Um, like every time I like, hear about an update, I'm just like, they're just going to throw this thing out. I'm just waiting for them. Uh, that's my opinion. That's definitely not reflecting. Well, no, no. Well, yeah, well, yeah whatever. We, 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 can go th- we can go that far into it because this has actually been discussed publicly, I think. Um, th- there are two currently current pre- prevailing opinions. Um and not just from you know people you know the actual there's actually two prevailing opinions from uh, different sets of lawyers I've spoken to. Um, one is that uh, they're you know they're they're pushed they're, they're, they there's not going to be an offer and they're going to stick to their guns and uh, they're just going to go to trial because um, you know they they're, uh, mad, bro. they're mad bro yeah yeah they're mad. Um, <laughs> the other one is that they're they're they keep delaying because they're trying to get as far away from possible as the from the incident. Uh, so they can, because apparently, from what I've learned from dealing with this, is that whole you know fair and speedy trial thing is is a complete bullshit, um, because the the the, pro- the prosecutors are allowed to um, take more um, extensions than you are as as the defendant. Um, they're allowed to ask for more continuances than you are, um, and for pretty much no other reason than we're not ready. Um, because that's now happened on multiple occasions Jesus. when I've shown up. Um, but w- what I've been told by multiple legal sources is that this, you know, not promising me anything, obviously, um, but that this is a common tactic, apparently, that they will ex- uh, exercise as many of these as they possibly can so that they can get away as far away from as possible so that they can quietly dismiss the whole thing with it, with hopefully as l- a little fanfare as possible. Yeah. Um, although, I mean, they obviously don't know me because <laughs> as soon as this thing is over, I'm broadcasting it on every show that I'm a part of and any other show that wants to have me on. Um so uh but yeah so that's that's still where i'm at so i have no idea yeah. um but in, i am in case still we're pre- bearing the lead by the way you can go back and listen to i'll, I'll link it in the description uh to the, to the podcast where we were at, where we talked about well not you and me but i think it was someone else i can't remember who B- B- babby i think was it maybe? Bab? i thought it was we'll see uh it might it might have been it, it, it sounds it was. right it thought it was I thought it was. Yeah, it your, sounds right. Your Long Island is coming out. Yeah, it happens Long sometimes. Long Island. Long, Long Island. Yeah, I, I, I spell it when I when I type Long Long Island, I, I try to make fun of the accent at the same time, so I spell it like I'm mowing my lawn. Yep. And no, that's why I do. Guy I do the same land. Thing. <laughs> guy, like your guy, <laughs> and this is yeah. your land. So Guy Land, <laughs> Long Island. It's, Long uh, Island. It's, a, yeah. it's very it's very it's very accurate. Um, a lot of my family has that very severe accent. I mean, I, I, I spent most, I spent a good, you know, mo- most of my formative years in Pennsylvania. So I grew up with more of the backwoods hick, hick accent too. Oh, okay. Um, so it, it's, it's kind of a weird combo. So it just, it peaks in different places. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't have the severe one. Like, you know, the, the, the Long Island housewife one, like, like, uh, cunt whale. Yeah. Um, I got, I got a little bit of a Cali kind of surfer bro, dude. 
thing yeah. going on every once in a while. It, it it crops up and then I, I can pat it down a little bit, but every once in a while it'll come back in full force. And I'm just like I'm just chilling, man. Like it's just like chilling, you know. It's like fucking. I just I went on down to the store the other day, and fucking headed on down to Cater and fucking took a life at Spring Mountain. Fucking got some sriracha. I'm good, bro. <laughs> like. <laughs> Sometimes I'll yeah, do that. It just it's just the California in me. But but I recognize when I do it and I try to avoid doing it, but it comes out every once in a while. It's like, oh, yeah. I do I I do I do tr- I do try to stop myself as well. It's even worse when like the not just the Long Island one, but the New York accent comes in like the Brooklyn accent, which I've never lived there, but you pick it up being around here. And there's certain words and certain things that just like if I'm not paying attention, I will drift into it. Like those ones I try to stop myself immediately. It's like, no, don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. Yeah. Um, it's been even worse. It's been more severe since I've been doing like podcasts and radio, though. Like now I'm more conscious of it. Yeah. Now you're trying to achieve the, what is it, the, the non regional dialect. And that's what I've been well, working to achieve for quite a while. I yeah. Just, I, well, I, I need to start doing that even more because one of the things I'm going to start doing uh, even more of once my business officially closes, because that's what I was starting to say before, like even with all the other stuff still up in the air for me, uh, I'm still proceeding with everything else. Like the business is closing uh, September 30th is, 30th is my last day. And um, from then on out, I won't actually have a job for a little while. So I actually intended to go full bore into uh, auditioning for uh, audiobooks and stuff and try to make a little money that way. Wow. So I really, I, I really need to start getting a lot more uh, conscious of uh, my articulation yeah. uh, with, with words and, and, and trying to pare down that accent. Although I have found quite a, cause I belong to that, uh, audible, um, is it audible? Yeah. It's connected to Amazon, I guess, where you can, uh, audition for, to, to, you know, to read for different books and stuff like cool. that and make, make money uh i know uh shane radliff from liberty under attack is actually the one who told me about that he, d- he does it oh, and sweet. uh but there there actually are like there's you know they their dialects they look for and one of them is like a, a northeastern or a new york one a lot of people are actually looking for that for certain books so i'm like hey yeah. i could actually i don't have to i don't have to work so hard to do those I, ones i know um matt pritchard uh to sauce he actually uh, yes there's a couple books that he's that he's done that's on audible so if you nice. occasionally you'll you'll stumble across one of his books <laughs> Yeah, well, that's what yeah. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to break. I'm trying to break into because yeah. I want to. You know, by the way, we are st- we are still going to do the the Max Turner thing. Like I was going to get ready to do it a couple of weeks ago, and then I lost my voice being sick, um, and I'm just barely getting it back. So that's why I was like, all right, I could do a podcast. Because I was actually I was actually going to have MK take over the show with the with the, with the new guest co host that's uh, scheduled to be coming up, which is super secret, top secret. I don't think you know yet. Do you? No, I know. I, I saw something about it the other day, and I'm like, Ooh. I have no idea. Yeah. I don't know what that is. So yeah, I was I was gonna be like I'm just gonna let them take over the show for just one episode, <laughs> see how that train wreck went. <laughs> like, all right, this wait, is now everything wait, they say. Yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 this this show or unspooked the right? I'm confused. Oh no no no! This was this was uh, the Lulberts. Yeah, I was gonna have oh, okay. the, I was gonna have MK like hijack the show because I didn't have a voice, but she couldn't she couldn't work out a good time with the other co host so. Didn't happen. Uh, hopefully, it'll happen soon, though, because they're still trying to do it. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. But unspooked cool. the right. Uh, we should probably be. Well, we'll talk to you off offline about that. We should definitely do that. I definitely want to start doing more of that. But we're gonna do the audio book of the Wolfie Landstriker um, edition of uh, the unique in its property, the ego at its own by Max Sterner. Well, um, we are gonna do. The, we are gonna do the new one. I thought it was up in the air because of, he may freak out about copyright or whatever. Well, okay, so Wolfie doesn't care about copyright. Like, if you look at all oh. this stuff, like he doesn't give a shit about the copyright. The problem was Underworld Amusements was uh, taking down things that were or people that were posting it up because it the translation isn't copyrighted, but the typeface and the the stylization and all the artwork is. So if you look at look at the copyright in the book, and I don't know if they have the copy have the book around me right now. Yeah, mine's in the other room at the moment. But uh, if you look at the uh, the copyright information, it says like it says uh, it doesn't say anything about the translation. It just says like you know this was written or translated by Wolfie Landstriker. That's about it. Like that's how bland it is. And then it goes. By the way, the artwork and the typeface is copyright. I think it was Kevin Slaughter or whatever. Okay, I can't remember who exactly? Uh, maybe it was him. Um, so there's no issue with doing an audio yeah, version so of it then? W- w- the long story short of what happened is that there's a guy named Dr. Bones who was an egoist communist 
<coughs> who's an idiot. Um, he threw a big fuss and was like, Kevin Slaughter attended this thing in 2001 with uh, Richard Spencer. Ah. <laughs> uh. And, you know, he has alt-right sympathies. And um, because of that, like, there was a big fuss and people were threatening to boycott and everything. And Wolfie came out and said, um, you know, like, I don't think that was true. Like, he told me that he wasn't. He's like, but I'm looking at some of the things that he did. Maybe he does. I don't know. But, you know, he's been a friend of mine for 30 years. He's never said anything like this the stuff that he's alleged of being doing it. But just to be on the safe side, I'm... You know, I'm not going to do it. And he was like, but this guy's a coward. Like, he knows that I don't play on the Internet. Like, he's like, I avoid the Internet at all costs. And he's he's bashing me because he knows that he, can't, he, won't, he won't hear a response from me. But here I am. And fuck this guy. And, you know, I guess fuck Kevin Slaughter, too. Um, he's like, hmm. just to be safe, like, I'm just going to kind of distance myself and end a friendship that I've had for over 30 years because over this stuff. And he's like, I'm taking my book and walking. And I'm encouraging pirate editions. So I was like, okay. Cool. Oh, and I guess Kevin right. Slaughter is kind of like, yeah, there's nothing I can do about it. He's the one that that took it, so it's his. So I'm like, well, if it's hmm. his, and he's he's he doesn't advocate copyright, well, we're gonna do it. <laughs> All <laughs> right, cool. 100 confirmation that it's cool. Uh, we're just not gonna use the artwork for it. And so, what I want to do is, like, I already have the introduction. It's already up on Patreon. Uh, just the introductionary chapter. I'm gonna do the first chapter. And then I'm going to, st- or you can start recording the other chapters if you want, but I, I'm going to have like all the Lulbergs, like at least record one thing. Uh, some of them can't do it because um, Matt Pritchard, he, you know, he's going to want money because he's like, I do this professionally. Fuck you. <laughs> you know? Oh, come yeah. on, Matt. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do this. I'm, Mike, I don't think. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, exactly. I'm trying to do this. <laughs> he does this professionally. If, how do you have to do it professionally if you don't have a mic? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm trying to get into do, doing this semi professionally, and I'm still I'd still do this for free. I don't care. Yeah, that's why the same reason I did Ben the, the same reason I did Ben the Stones book when that project came yeah. up. I was like, hell yeah, I will jump on that. Not not for any and not for any other reason. Uh, the only two reasons were to get myself some practice at it. Number one and number two for Ben. Yeah. Like that's exactly why I would do it. And and for this, I would do it just for this cause, just for the you know because yeah. it's you know it's a good book. something. It's something. It's something I would like to see out there. Yeah. Because that. That's how I. That's how I. You know, the first time I listened to the original translation, um, was uh, was I listened to it. It was an. It was the audio book. And it's you god know. awful. It, it is the <laughs> so one. Bad. Yes, I know the one. The one on LibriVox is. But on. But you know what? It was the. It, the that's how I found it originally, and yep. I listened to it, and then I've. You know, I, I read it since. I still have. To, I haven't actually opened my copy. I have my copy of the, the of Wolfie's. It's a lot um, better read. It's translation so much easier. There's a lot of times where I was just kind of scratching my head at some of the stuff that's in uh, the original translation, the Byington translation. But then, like reading it <sighs> under that translation, it's like. Oh, I see what he's doing, and it's and the satire is a lot more clear. Like when he's doing satire, you're getting it. Like a, it comes through a lot clearer. So, yeah, I remember you and 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 both you and Brian Sovereign saying that yeah. um, about that. So, yeah, I gotta I gotta start I gotta start reading that version at some point. So. Yeah, well, then we're gonna start reading it. <laughs> yes. So we well, I know I would like I would like to read I would like to read whatever chapter I'm gonna do yeah. at a time. <laughs> Like I'm only gonna read the chapters I read for the book, and that's it. <laughs> that's my gonna be all my huh. only understanding. No, huh. <laughs> but um, so yeah, the the plan is like I'm gonna release it on for for Patreon only, and I think maybe after like thirty, sixty, ninety, whatever, however generous or ungenerous I'm feeling, that it's gonna be released publicly, and you can do whatever you want with it. But initially, it's gonna be like Patreon only. I'm gonna release like episodes after a while, and they're gonna be timed because I guess like on Patreon you can have like a timer, and you could say like I want this to be. Like really, like this is early access, so like only Patreon members can listen to it. But then, like after so many days, like everybody has access to it. So that's what I'm gonna do. So yeah, yeah, I, I haven't played with Patreon enough to know that. Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna start recording my parts next week, and then um, I'll start talking in the groups about who's gonna do what chapters, blah blah blah. So. All right. It's gonna be a thing, damn it! <laughs> so, but I lost my voice. I couldn't talk, and I'm still kind of. Bar- I still don't have a hundred percent. I'm like ninety-two percent somewhere in there. Ninety-two point seven five somewhere in there. <laughs> Gotta be roughly, 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 roughly speaking. Roughly speaking, uh, I, I can't. I can't, I can't sing. I can't do a lot of my impressions. So it's not a hundred percent. So, uh, yeah. Well. 
Wah, wah. All right. Anyways, great having you on again. Anything you want to plug <laughs> before you go? Seeds of Liberty. Nah, whatever. Well, we we fi- well, I finally do have a new website for for my podcast. So yeah, go, oh, go yeah. check out it. And actually, and, it's not. Yeah, yeah. Is, and it does it, not violate the non-aggression any. principle. I, yeah, I, I don't I, think so. It has my blessing. <laughs> so <laughs> yes. I don't know why it needed my blessing. <laughs> uh, well, because you were the you were the only person who actually came out and said something about yeah. it somewhat publicly. <laughs> Um, <laughs> on my show, I think. So, no, it was, it so, was yeah. here. Like I, I said. Like, oh, was it? Yeah, that, that's right. That that Dave Painter's argument falls apart because he's finally the non-aggression principle <laughs> <laughs> on that website that's advocating for the non-aggression principle. And it's a, a performance contradiction. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, yeah. So our, but, our new, but, our, but the contradiction already happened, so it's therefore already untrue, no matter how non-aggression it is now. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right. Well, this, it is now. <laughs> Regardless, it's a new site. It's even it's even a new it's even a new URL because he also dropped the ball and let our uh, let our pot, let our let our let our domain name get away. Um, so it's now at it's now at solpodcast dot org. Shit out of luck or seeds <laughs> <of> liberty. <laughs> Either one. <laughs> you got to be worried about those acronyms. That's why I don't acronym the Walmart's. <laughs> it's not TL. I don't care. They, no, they they both apply. So you know it's fine. <laughs> All right, man. Great having you on again. Yeah, man. I'm glad we finally got to do this. Yeah. <laughs> Worms. Worms. Worms.